All right, quick tour of my yard, and to sort of demonstrate something. <clears throat> I hate that Easter happens at the start of the month and instead of the middle or toward the end, because we have all these, you know, hyacinths and pansies and things that are not native compared to things that are native, which are just getting started here. Uh, I'm, I'm actually still planting some things. And I do have lots of bloodroot here, but um, they're not <laughs> quite there. Uh, they're an early flower -er when they're established. Uh, this is twin leaf right here, and that's another one that flowers early, but it's not really a big one. This is another early one here. It's called Spring Beauty. And it just has this little grass type uh, foliage around the plant. And all the trilliums are kind of pumping up here. In Jacob's Ladder. Makes a nice ground cover, not quite uh, flowering. I have a early trillium here, trillium uh, bacillum, I think. That one is. I do have two flowers there. Good. Good. And trillium, you know, cuneatum is doing its thing. But like, you know, friendly facilia, uh, other trilliums not open yet. Um, uh, Virginia water leaf not open yet. <laughs> you know, it's a, <laughs> a May apple just pushing out of the ground here. I, I guess uh, you know Easter works better like slightly to the south of us. So you get away with just using uh, native wildflowers, but uh, you know, someone dug you up. I see a squirrel or something got in there. <clears throat> Here's some uh, hepatica going to flower. It's a nice blue one. Hepatica, I, I've never actually grown it all that well here. Here's that trillium cuneatum. It smells fantastic. It's, uh, it usually has this like white pattern, and it's all usually always forms a stripe, kind of down every direction. Nice and fragrant. It's like a, it's like oranges, kind of. Now, over here, I have some uh, heucheras. I have the red trillium here, and that hasn't actually pushed out of the ground, but I like... I'm going for the uh, the flower to um, basically uh, play off of the purple foliage of that particular one there. Uh, I also have wild geranium, and uh, this, this leaf here you're seeing all over the previous garden. That is jewelweed, but uh, Virginia bluebells not open yet. Uh, some twin leaf that came up earlier than this twin leaf that has already flowered and is starting to make seed pods. And around here I have some more trilliums that I put in this year. We're setting up for Easter, so I made some arrangements and uh, sort of you know, non-native exceptions in the uh, native plant garden. <coughs> and I found a local nursery selling this uh, Phlox uh, starts with a D. Well, anyway, it's a, it's a native phlox, but I have this planted in the garden already, and it is just a little, you know, a little uh, thing here. This is a greater water leaf, which I really need to transplant somewhere else, because it does like to reseed itself a lot, and I'd love it to be somewhere other than just this one patch here. <clears throat> Uh, more of the same over there. There's a type of sedum that was back there. Uh, over here I have Golden Alexander. Uh, more uh, friendly facilia, which I'm happy to see is finally becoming the horrible weed I'm told it is. But I'm planting it on purpose. And back here is like a really shady part of the garden here. I have uh, old beekeeping supplies. I have a pawpaw tree here. Uh, red buckeye kind of there, a uh, eastern red bud, a non-native cherry, a uh, willow leaf oak, a red oak behind us, a uh, hackberry, I think. It all gets very nice and dark and shaded here, but for some reason a uh, cup plant does not care <laughs> about that. So uh, Over here we have wild ginger just poking up. Over here is a uh, colony of Pikmin, or the plant that uh, Pikmin was based off of anyway. For some reason, my colony of this, it's actually trout lily, but uh, 
they have never really, um, everyone tells me, oh, you have to wait seven years for that to flower. It's like, well, tell that to my colony, you know, ten years ago. <laughs> but they're reproducing and become a thick mat there. Over here I have some, uh, stuff that's supposed to be really weedy, but I don't, I don't see it personally. Uh, one of those was flowering. It is, um, uh, what is it? Uh, well, I call it calling it woodland poppy. And there's a nursery near me that actually is selling white trillium. But you saw my white trillium back in the previous garden. They weren't even up yet. And I just planted some bloodroot here too. That is, uh, you know, the squirrels I've been inspecting here. Uh, nothing really going on over here, more of the same. And uh, here's another trillium, so I mean, they'll look nice, but, you know, like, I, I wish Easter was, you know, just a few more weeks. <laughs> and this would all, like, end of April would certainly be a very nice time. This is a thick clump of uh, friendly phacelia. Something I can actually harvest and turn into uh, plants to give out to friends. I don't want to do that too much, though, because it's actually not native to this state. Over here is that blue phlox, and you can see it's just kind of spreading out from where it was, and it grows and does its thing. I moved some friendly phacelia there, because it has a nice purple flower, which would go great with those blue flowers, and then the blue, the uh, Jacob's Ladder, and then the blue and pink of the uh, uh, Virginia bluebells. So on, and not much else going on over there. Uh, we just installed a, basically an outdoor living room <laughs> over here, which I'm looking forward to seeing if it holds up to hurricane season. <clears throat> it does look nice. I think it actually uh, adds a sense of class or something. To the yard. I'm not crazy about the sod, but yeah, right now it's like it's here. It's the best thing for it, and. Overall, like it's it's functioning as a floor that I'm happy with. I certainly wouldn't want to be mowing in here, and it's it's actually not getting as dirty as I've thought it would. This is the uh, tomato garden proper. We were uh, you know start of April here, so this is like the main meadow garden, which I have all my full sun stuff in here. Uh, a lot of the more pokey grass coming up. Those are all uh, camacia. And over here, sticking up through the Creeping Charlie, is a uh, uh, spiderwort. And then I got into roses last year for some reason. It was like, you know, let me actually grow these without any chemicals and possibly without any fertilizer. Let me actually see how some of these do. I may actually just throw a little sprinkling of fertilizer down on them, just because I don't see it really harming the goldenrod or... Uh, a uh, cut leaf cone flower, or um, there's Baptisia that comes up later on, and uh, Amsonia and uh, ironweed. Like I, I don't see, you know, just uh, any sort of added uh, stuff. I don't use pesticides, though. I refuse to use that. But um, you know, there's different types of goldenrod that are in here, all in various stages. And I need to figure out something for this garden because this is also supposed to be a full shade garden. Uh, but because we've added that, we've had to push the grill over this way. I may push the grill back that way, because all the heat coming off the back of that grill is probably going to kill everything there. I may have to turn that into a pass. So all the plants that are there, if I can remember what they are, they don't seem to be pushing up whatever they were. And I do see some things there. That's probably um, uh, Brown Eyed Susan. But over here is... Uh, I believe it's uh, Goldenrod Fireworks, which started as a nice plant in the middle there, and it's ever so slowly spread. But it's a very shallow-rooted plant. I can usually take care of that <coughs> quite easily. Uh, this is a Saskatoon tree, which is a like Western native, and I don't know too much about that, but I figured I would grow it. I was into like food forests and stuff at the time. <clears throat> so, oh, I do have uh, flocks that uh, 
every time the Mont Cuba Center basically finishes up a trial, I buy like the top, uh, all the top ones I can get. And every time my mom orders random bulbs in the mail, we try to accommodate those. These are just some pots I need to move out of the way here. Um, this is, uh, well, it started as it's you know, some garbage. Um, but this is a persimmon tree that I needed to get rid of. Um, I was hearing, like, murderous sounds coming from it one day. And it was just getting tall enough to go into the house, and that's like my bedroom window right there. And apparently persimmons are the favorite food of raccoons. And the murderous sounds I heard on Halloween day of all days um, were like a family of like five or six raccoons. Uh, all uh, fighting one another <laughs> over the persimmons. Uh, so I, I do like the persimmon tree. It certainly was one of the more active uh, sort of insect activity, but it's just, you know, that close to the house, it was not the right spot for it. So our little pond here. Um, Sullivan's milkweed grows here. Uh, between the pots here, uh, there are little stands of uh, different types of milkweed that I let grow among tomato plants and other things that come up there. And then this garden, it's pretty much inactive, but it's again, it's a full sun kind of garden. And uh, for Easter flowers, I don't think I did pretty bad. I don't think I did too bad. Uh, this is a type of chrysanthemum that I actually really like. It's probably not as bright a pink as it's actually being recorded here, but it does have like a two-tone quality to it. <laughs> like the underside of the petals are like a yellow, the top side is like this pink color, and uh, it actually goes pretty well here. There's only one nursery around me, too, that sells that uh, shade. Everything else is like really kind of girly kind of thing here. And uh, this is, uh, this black leaf here is, um, oh, what is it? Uh, uh, it's a yellow lysistra or something, or yellow flowering lysistra. And the dog likes to nudge things around here, but uh, anyway, that's pretty much the yard here. I have another thing going here. Uh, let's see, there's a trillium right in the middle here. We have those three leaves. Uh, Virginia bluebells. Great stand of Jacob's Ladder. I love how this almost looks like moss, or not moss, um, like a fern kind of thing, but it has these like blue flowers, and it just gets more and more of those as the month goes on. And they start to get big enough to like cover the uh, various tree roots, and I believe they've started to <coughs> seed on their own. That looks like a young plant I didn't put there, so I can always move things around. I do like it when plants do that, and this is kind of a part of our yard where we put things that are not necessarily as a home to them, but uh, I have a type of different violets and things back here. There's another stand of uh, twin leaf back here that, for whatever reason, it comes up like a month later. <laughs> and it's just the simple fact that it's, I guess, getting less sun, or it's that far down from the watershed area. And <laughs> there's a squirrel trying to reclaim a peanut from where I was uh, planting bloodroot earlier. But uh, anyway, that's kind of... What we have going on in the garden. Oh, um, round leaf ragwort, which is not doing anything. I'll probably do another video in a few weeks. Pretty much the same thing, just a garden tour to show how every, how everything just like, you know, flowers up a bit. <laughs> Be careful back here. This just started as like everything was growing on that side and that side, <laughs> but now it's pushing out. And I don't know why I put some of the things in here that I did, but. Yeah, I did. But anyway, it's been the uh, the garden here.